time for the main event of the evening. San Diego is usually renowned for its sand, sun, and surf, but tonight it transforms into the center of the MMA universe. It's time to shine the spotlight on the WEC's lightweight division. Frank, Jamie Varner walks like the champ, talks like the champ, and obviously fights like a champion. He believes he is better than Donald Cerrone on every level. It's hard to argue with a guy when he's a champion. Jamie Varner has excellent hands. We've seen his striking ability, very heavy-handed. He finishes a lot of fights with those hands. But on top of that, he's also a very sound wrestler, wrestled in college, All-American. And he wrestles over there with the uh, in Arizona. The training team is a very complete fighter all the way around. Donald Cerrone's nothing to lose attitude, so to speak, has served him well up to this point. He likes being the underdog, doesn't he? Yeah, Cerrone does like to go ahead and play the heel a lot. He likes doing that draw when he comes in there. He's a very accomplished striker also. Very good Muay Thai, throws a little bit more kicks than the champ does. Also has excellent hands, but the one area that he's most dangerous at, I feel, is his back. His guard work is very dangerous in one area of this game of the fight tonight that could actually come into play. The easiest things to do is look at a common opponent in Razor Rob McCullough to see how this one might go, but in MMA, it's never that easy. How do you see this one going? Well, you know what, I gotta still go with the champ a little bit here just because Cerrone showed that he can take a shot. He has a good shot with Rob McCullough. He was able to get back up to his feet, but he did eat a little bit of leather from him. And I feel that Jamie Varner does hit harder. And if he takes shots from him, it could be a shorter night. Varner has the hard rare. Cerrone wants to take it from him. Let the attack begin. No matter which way the championship fight goes, expect the MMA chess match to escalate. Each thinks he's going to dictate and dominate. I want to be immortalized in this sport forever. I want to be a legend in the WEC. This is my breakout fight. This is my time to shine. I'm going to smash him. I'm going to take his belt. I wanted to fight the Cowboy. He was untested, undefeated, and I like fighting the guys that are undefeated. If they don't know how to lose, I'll be the one to teach them. I know Jamie thinks he's going to take me out in the first round, thinks I'm, I'm not confident coming into this fight. Well, he's wrong, and tonight we're going to see when we dance. I'm going to throw an overhand right and put him to the canvas. He's not getting up. I know he's been studying my footage from the last fight. He's going to want to throw an overhand right, so I'm going to bait him into throwing the overhand right counter, and then he's going to be with one on the ground. I still expect him to be the same fighter, maybe some small improvements. I plan on just running over this guy. I just let go. I need to let everything go, hold nothing back. Just go out there and let all my hard work I put in go and, and walk away a champion. I think it's going to be a quick one, man. I'm going to go out there, I'm going let to my, let my hands go, and I'm going to knock his ass out. setting sun here in San Diego. The victor, Donald Cerrone, comes in with that impressive 9-0-1 record in his professional career. Also 25-0 as an amateur kickboxer, Frank. He has excellent stand-up skills. He showcased that in the fight with Rob McCullough. His ability to transition from his hands to his kicks was really great. He has actually, I feel, better kicks than the champion does, Jamie Barner. A little bit of a style you know, a change there. The one area, though, that Donald Cerrone impresses me the most, he does have excellent stand-up, but it's off his back from his guard. His triangle and arm bar is really scary, and I'm very interested to see if Jamie Varner is really going to push in and try to fight from the top and use any ground and pound due to the fact that Donald Cerrone has such a vicious triangle and arm bar off of his back from the guard. Donald Cerrone feels that whatever he can do, he can push the pace. We take a look at our fighter profile. The Muay Thai we talked about, the effective triangle, of course. Eight of those nine wins have been by submission. This is a formidable opponent. There's a reason why he is the number one contender. Definitely. And then you see a guy that's had 25 fights in the Muay Thai area. And then when he converts over to MMA, you know, eight and nine of his wins are by submissions. It really shows a lot of versatility. And that comes, I think, a lot from, you know, training there with Greg Jackson in New Mexico. He's getting the chance of the best fighters in the world. I mean, at any point in the gym, he got, you know, Leonard Garcia, George St. Pierre, Rashad Evans, 
It's a who's who of who's going to be in the gym that day. And a lot of the guys, I mean, George St. Pierre, one of the top welterweights in the world, he fights at 170. John Sorny fighting here at 155. Some great battles I'm sure he's having in the gym with world-class competition. Cerrone has made a big deal about the fact that he went up to Montreal and came trained with George St. Pierre. We'll see if that training proves the difference. Scudardo to you know Brian Bader, who both those guys just won the reality show. So at any moment, he also has world-class competition to train with and to hone the skills he already has. So any day when this guy walks in the gym, if he's having a bad day, he's gonna get ran over. So he constantly has to push his level up to a high level. That's Varner's profile, but you can bet it's his job to bring something new to the cage every time. Again, I'm sure to see if Jamie Varner disappoint this fight. He uses his wrestling not so much to take the fight to the ground, but to avoid Donald Cerrone's ground attack from his back and impose his will as a boxer. Sure Donald Cerrone showed a few flaws in his game, that he was able to eat a lot of leather from Rob McCullough. Rob McCullough landed a lot of overhand rights. That's why you see Jamie Bonner speaking about that. Both guys are talking about, well, I'm going to throw overhand rights. You know, and Donald Cerrone is no fool. He can watch the tape realizing that, yeah, you know, you saw that, and I know you're going to go for it, but obviously I'm going to work on a counter. They have both made no secret about their game plan. However, is it gamesmanship? We are about to find out. Cerrone pacing inside the cage, waiting for Varner to come in and show exactly what he is made of. When Varner was able to stop Marcus Hicks in WC35, that was after T Hicks was able to take him down a couple times, Frank. Right? Jamie Varner showed a lot of ability to come back in that fight. Marcus Hicks, you know, it was a short fight, but still, Marcus Hicks is a little bowling ball, powerful individual, was trying to pose his will on Varner. And Varner showed what he's made of. And even in the fight when he won the title from Rob McCullough, he was doing well in the fight. Rob McCullough went in there and landed a vicious shot on Jamie Varner and hurt him. And Varner came back from that, was able to knock out Rob McCullough to win the title in the first place. So he's shown already as a champion that he can overcome adversity. Let's take a look at our tale of the tape. Donald Cowboy Cerrone going up against the champ, Jamie Varner. Varner a year younger, and he gives up four inches in height. He doesn't give much away, though, in reach. And that could be a key point to follow as this fight goes on. Let's send it inside the cage one final time tonight to the voice of the WEC, Joe Martinez. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the San Diego Sports Arena here in San Diego, California, the main event of the evening. Five scheduled rounds for the WEC Lightweight Championship of the World. San Diego, make some noise. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, is a Muay Thai specialist standing six feet even. Official weight, 154 and one half pound. His professional record entering the cage tonight is perfect. Nine victories with no defeats, one no contest. He fights out of Albuquerque, New Mexico. He is the undefeated, the challenger, Donald Cabo.
Next is a bullet across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. A mixed martial artist standing five feet, eight inches tall. Official weight, 155 pounds even. His professional record outstanding with 15 victories, just two defeats and two no contests. Fighting out of Tempe, Arizona, he is the reigning and defending WEC lightweight champion of the world, Jamie. Referee in charge of the action, Josh Rosenthal. All right, gentlemen, you'll be giving your instructions. I expect a clean fight. Obey my commands all times. Defend yourselves all times. Touch gloves, go back, let's beat us. As you said, Frank, there aren't many secrets between these two. They know how their strengths and weaknesses match up. As you just saw, a lot of respect from Jamie Varner. Jamie Varner, as we've talked about before, really Ready? takes the honor Ready? of holding Cut. this belt seriously. Set for the main event, a scheduled five rounds. One advantage you have is being such an accomplished kicker, as Donald Cerrone is, is that when he fights off his back, because when you throw kicks, there is that possibility of getting taken down. You have to have a good guard game. So Donald Cerrone having such a complete game off of his back, you should feel free to go ahead and throw kicks at will. Cerrone was quoted before this fight as saying, if I can push the pace, I can break him. Well, like you said earlier, you know, training with, you know, GSP and some of the other guys he has in his corner going up there in Canada, that has to be a huge boost in confidence, especially since, you know, you're training with another champion who's also preparing for a fight relatively at the same time, so it isn't like you're catching the guy when he's off peak or, you know, after a fight, you're catching the guy when he's also hitting his peak to be at his best. You know, Cerrone has, uh, looks like he's fixed the issues he had in the last fight, that he was really open for right hands. And so far, you know, the champs came in there a couple times, throwing a few right hands and, oh. A two lands, one a left, one a right. But Cerrone now on his back, as you mentioned, Frank, one of his skill sets. He is very excellent from the guard here. Uh, I've very, always been very impressed in the early fights I've seen of Donald Cerrone and how he's able to move off his back. You've seen there he was able to nullify the pass of Jamie Varner, and now he's grabbing kind of a, a, a different look here of grabbing like the rubber guard. It's almost kind of like he's using it to do a choke. Donald Cerrone slamming him down. Jamie's going to go ahead and try to press him against the cage, I think. He might be getting choked with this. I don't know. Jamie Varner was able to land a couple shots, but then since it's gone to the ground, Cerrone able they to salvage. Doing, apologize for stepping in on you, but he is kind of doing a collar choke there. He's using his right forearm. He's anchoring in on the ankle, and he's able to twist in there. It's almost kind of like in, in yeah, jiu-jitsu and judo, we use the gi as a choke. Donald Cerrone is so flexible and just through just natural gifts of how he's built, was able to use that to choke him. Varner finds a way, though, to sit up and to unleash and rain down on Cerrone. Those are some powerful punches. Excellent job of coming down and raining down the Fury. He needs to be careful, though. Donald Cerrone still is very dangerous from this position. Three minutes gone in round number one. Varner looking for every opening possible. Again, that was a sound pass that Jamie Varner just did, and Donald Cerrone is able to block it. Wow. Uh, Continues to just unleash Josh Rosenthal, the referee, right on top of it. Donald Cerrone has one heck of a chin because he's those are some of the hardest shots you could take in MMA. Is a punch coming straight from the ceiling down to the ground like that, and your head has nowhere to go, bouncing off the back of the canvas. Two, three, four times and finishes that flurry with an elbow. Look at the forehead of Donald Cerrone right there. Starting to show the effects. Yeah, 
Great ground and pound from the champ, Jamie Varner. He's done a great job of nullifying the guard of Donald Cerrone, which I said earlier, I was the one aspect of Donald Cerrone's game that I would most feel threatened by is him is, is fighting off his back here. And right now, Jamie Varner is winning the exchange back and forth. He's keeping a great position. He hasn't even been threatened one time with a sweep, and he's doing some damage. Coming up on 30 seconds to go here in round number one. Can Cerrone survive this absolute clinic by Jamie Varner at the moment? And again on his feet, deciding to bring the thunder. Cerrone negates it and then has some knees and answers of his own. That was a nice knee on the inside from Donald Cerrone. Able to start that off with a sweep attempt from his back. Another left knee. Donald Cerrone is a machine. The beating he just took off his back, and look at he's marching forward on the champion right now. Donald Cerrone, a bit like the Terminator, not only survives round one, but he'll be back. One round in the books, Jamie Varner brought it, Frank. Yeah, you see there, he's throwing the overhand right, was able to actually counter it with the left hook. Awesome ground and pound from Jamie Varner, really nullifying the dangerous guard of Donald Cerrone. Let's fight. Donald Cerrone, though, by the end of the round, had some English of his own that he was bringing. We start round two. Both looked as fresh as they can. Varner in the black trunk, Cerrone there with the kick in the white and black. Cerrone is just a tough, tough guy. I mean, obviously, he's a skilled mixed martial artist, but he has some attributes just physically that make him very dangerous. That's a nice roundhouse. Again, another nice roundhouse. Straight to the body of Varner, but Varner reacts with the takedown. There's some vicious roundhouses he's throwing. It's all shin. Jamie Varner now looks like he's finally gotten past the guard of Donald Cerrone. Interesting to see if he's going to be able to hold this position or Cerrone's flexibility and links and allow him to pull him back into half guard. All right, use his knees right now to hit the hip X and pull him right into the full guard again. Is it, it's as if he was following your script, Frank. Cerrone needs to rewrite an ending, though. Excellent job of getting back up to his feet. Cerrone's conditioning is just immensely impressive. I don't know, I mean, it's, it's half attributed to the fact that he's awesome, obviously in awesome shape, but his composure, he never looks to get too nervous or use too much energy. Even through all these battles right now, he looks completely relaxed. Varner really went for that right, it just missed. Talking about Cerrone, Frank, he said coming into this, he was gonna stick more to his game plan when Razor hit him the last time in his last fight in 36, he said his ego took over. Yeah, I think that Cerrone likes to put on a good fight for the crowd. He does have that ego where he's going to sit there and go chin shot for chin shot. Not always a good idea, though, for fighting in the titles. Here he's shown excellent composure. Varner able to get the hand up with that left coming in, but just in time. Now Cerrone's getting some confidence with two minutes gone in round number two. And it's Varner backing up. He's marching down the champ consistently. It's interesting to see how the Georgia judges are scoring this right now because Jamie Varner is backing up and backing down and getting marched down by Donald Cerrone. But then he does get the takedown and gets on top. Varner said before the fight, if Cerrone wants to stand, he's more than happy to accommodate him, and he figured it was going to be a fast fight, but it's been Varner who's been doing the takedowns. And again, the blows come down. Varner so far in this fight has shown that he has a oh, triangle attempt. He has excellent ability to ground and pound and oppose his will there. He doesn't have the same effectiveness from his feet. Another great escape by Donald the Cowboy Cerrone. Puts them back on their feet with two minutes to go in round two. Another factor, too, is you see how many steps Jamie Varner takes to march backwards. He's moving his feet a lot more. Donald Cerrone is taking bigger, more deliberate, calm steps. So even if they both have the same conditioning level right now, Donald Cerrone is going to, be able to keep this pace up for a lot longer. Jamie Varner's camp has said they think he's going to get better as the fight goes on. 
We're down to 90 seconds in round two. And for the first time since the opening, about 10 seconds, we've seen both of them settle back and assess each other, but that didn't last long. Cerrone's roundhouses right now are just vicious. He's going to the body, going to the head. The leg kicks. And even though with those kicks, it seems Varner's been able to get his hand up, they still take a toll, don't they? They are. They're, 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 that power, that's your shin versus your forearm. It's still driving through. Obviously, the forearm keeps you from being knocked out. But I've seen more than one fighter get his arm broken from blocking roundhouses consistently over and over again. A right misses for Cerrone. Great head movement by Varner to keep clear. 33 seconds left in round two, and again, Varner goes for that big right hand. Now, Cerrone's doing a great job of throwing that left roundhouse to the body when he's trying to time Jamie Varner coming in with that right hand. And that's a hard exchange for Varner to want to fight because he might land the right hand, but at the same time, he might get his ribs broken from that roundhouse. Cerrone on his back again with 10 seconds to go in round two. It looks as though we are going to go to three. Oh. Cerrone, though, look at this. This is how round two is going to finish off, and we will see a third round. Scary. On a night in San Diego when Let's we have fight. seen a lot of fights end quickly, this one has gone to round number three, a scheduled five-round championship bout in the lightweight division. What are you doing? Not sure, I guess they're drawing the line. <laughs> These two now both smiling at each other. They know they've already given each other their best shots. They've both survived up to this point. It's now becoming, in the third round, perhaps, a war of attrition. Cerrone's done an excellent job of fixing the problems he had in his last fight with McCullough. Right now, the right hand of Jamie Varner is not really landing. He's able to use not only combinations of his stiff jab and the left roundhouse to be able to keep Jamie Varner off him. The roundhouse goes to the inside of the legs, to the rib cage when he's coming in, and then he even throws it high because if you're blocking a roundhouse with your right hand, you can't really throw a punch with it at the same time. And again, it's Cerrone advancing forward, the champion backing up, assessing. He's, he's very good on his timing. He's using his length. You see every time that Jamie Varner comes in, he's stiffing him, he's, he's stiffing him with a jab right down the middle. And again, the left roundhouse. Good shot to the body with the right from Cerrone. some power with the fists. And just like in round number one, he lands a couple solid shots. It looks as though has... Cerrone's bleeding on his left eye. That's actually the first time that they're thinking that Cerrone's actually slightly maybe wrong or hurt. He has such a granite chin. There's that cut. Cerrone has taken so many shots already. Jamie Varner doing a good job of trying to pass the guard. He has his ankle in a perfect spot to avoid the knee ball. Locking up a guillotine choke here. Jamie Varner has found an opening, but it looks as though Cerrone could pull the hand away, and yes, he gets out of it. Almost halfway through the fight itself. Two Great and a half going in round from three. The champ. He's able to get right back up to his feet. Donald Cerrone really starting to blink that left eye. I'm wondering his visibility level right now. I mean, that's one thing that just you can't control through toughness. He might be able to take one hell of a shot and has no quit in him whatsoever. But if his eye shuts due to the fact that he's getting caught with that punch, that could get the fight stopped. The first time, really, we've seen him uh, look like for a second there that maybe Donald Cerrone was going to start backing up. Less than two minutes to go in round number three. Cerrone's corner is going to take a look at that eye. If he makes it that far, a couple great shots to the chin from Varner. Varner has some good power coming in. He needs to be very careful of those kicks coming through. 
He comes forward, he extends that hand. Finally starting to equal up a little bit here on the stand up again. I think the visibility of Del Cerrone is compromised at the moment. A lot of abuse and a lot of swelling around both eyes. I can't tell which eye is actually the worst for the wear right now at this distance. That is the result of the punishment that Varner has unleashed over almost 15 minutes here in this championship bout in San Diego. They both talked about conditioning coming in, but as you would expect, they're slowing down a little bit. They've been giving it all out for close to 15 minutes. Such quick speed with that leg comes right up. It's scary trying to close the distance with that punch, come, that kick coming right up in you. James Varner is doing a great job. There's real good traditional boxing with that jab cross coming right over the top. Oh, missed with a very large overhand right. That one connected. That one found its mark. But Cerrone able to get that leg in there again. But Cerrone, that left leg has definitely been a, a big fixture and improvement on how he's on his stand-up. He already had a you know, very vicious stand-up game, but that was that one blaring weakness that a lot of us saw in his last fight that he just took so much abuse from Rob McCullough with right hands. And I think that that left roundhouse has been a great implement into his overall game. Part of his arsenal, 10 seconds left in round number three. Both these fighters look to be tiring, but they have put on a fantastic show. We'll have round number four and see about Cerrone's eye when we come back. Coming into this championship fight, fight for the lightweight crown of the WEC, both these fighters knew it was going to take everything that they had. We start round four, Cerrone's both his eyes, Frank. You can see him squinting, trying to just make out his opponent. Oh! What a kick from Varner. What a, I mean, I don't know what I'm more impressed with right now. That roundhouse from Varner, the fact that connected and Cerrone's legs didn't even buckle. Cerrone has just been able to stand and take everything Varner's dished out, as well as dish out a beating of his own. Varner, without question, has taken some shots also. See again, he times that roundhouse right down the middle, coming over there when, when uh, Jamie Varner's trying to charge in. Jamie would do well probably now to start faking a little bit when he's coming in. Sure, you know, uh, Herky jerky type movements, you know, step in hard on your foot, step back out, step in hard. So he's not so, uh, doesn't telegraph when he's charging in. When he goes, he goes all at once, and there's never any disguise about it. And that's helping Donald Cerrone really time him with that roundhouse. You can hear the crowd here in the San Diego Sports Arena shouting for both fighters. And like we saw in round number two, Varner the one backpedaling. Varner's been close a few times tonight with that right. Cerrone makes him pay. See, Varner just, every time he's just coming straight in, straight in. He needs to put some type of fake up with Donald because Cerrone's roundhouse is just, it's real class, it's excellent. I mean, he just times it, he drives that shin in there. What would each corner be telling their fighters at this point? If you're Donald Cerrone's corner, what are they telling? I think Donald would just tell them to keep pushing the pace now, coming forward, not, not, he's not really pulling the trigger as much as he was earlier. He needs to go ahead and increase the pace of this fight. Looks like Jamie Varner, you know, he's, he's backing up, and Varner's aware that he's winning right now. So don't let the champ go ahead and, and cruise by on the, the points here. If you were a judge, would you have given Varner every round so far? No, a lot of the rounds are close, and I can see them being argued either way right now. You know, you have the submission attempts from Donald Cerrone, the fact he's imposing his will with the kicks. Obviously, Varner's landing some great hand combinations, really firing down the pipe. I mean, only have to look at Donald Cerrone's face for evidence of that. Jimmy Varner is also really, you know, controlling the takedown portion here. It, it just goes back and forth too much to really say that, you know, clear cut who's dominating who. The 
number of rounds in this bout. We have seen Cerrone in this position, and he has been able to dictate from here even as much as Varner has been able to rain leather. Another elbow from Varner. And just like that, we're already over three minutes into round number four. I'm really interested in this choke. If I could bring Don Cerrone after the fight <laughs> and ask him what this is, is it a controlling maneuver? Is it a finishing maneuver? It's excellent control. I mean, he really has Jamie Varner's head stuck when he does it, but then what else do you do from that point? Is there a finish coming off of it, or is it just purely to control your opponent and avoid any onslaught? And, and how much would that even be taken out of Cerrone as well? They're back on their feet. Cerrone seems to be getting a second win, really coming forward. Varner showing a lot of respect for the kicking ability of Donald Cerrone. Cerrone felt like if he could frustrate the champ, that would be to his advantage. We're not sure if that frustration is set in, but he certainly has been using the height advantage and that reach advantage of his legs. Varner with another takedown. Only 40 seconds left in round number four, and finally we see Cerrone do some kicking from the back. Very dangerous spot though for Donald again. Both the guys, I, I, I can see how it's dangerous for either one, you know. Cerrone's eating some hard leather from that position. At the same time though, we've seen some very close submission attempts come from Donald Cerrone on the champ, James Varner. Under 20 seconds to go. These guys have put on a great show here in San Diego. That's what you would expect out of a main event on a WEC card. Jamie Varner in his second title defense doing everything he can to retain the belt. Donald Cerrone has had an answer so far for four rounds. We'll be back with the fifth and final round. We're gonna stay here and go through some replays, Frank. We're gonna go back to the third round to start and how they exchanged some blows. Yeah, and here you see Jamie Varner coming in with that left hook. He set it up with the right hand. Was able to actually catch Cerrone here a little bit. Finishing off with some hand combinations. Those shots in the eyes, it was the first time we've ever seen Donald a little bit wobbled there. It looks, again, it was more of a testament to the fact that those thumbs kind of got in the eye a little bit. Now we go to the fourth round, and we're going to take a look at a big kick from Jamie Varner. If you're on the ground, you're going to get up. What are you going to do? He's not just a boxer, he has kicks also. But the fact that, you know, Donald Cerrone took that kick is quite impressive. Let's go, let's go. A little reticent to get up off of the stools to begin the fifth round, as you could expect. Very fatigued as we enter the fifth and final round of our main event. This for the championship in the WEC lightweight division. The Cowboy, Donald Cerrone, against Jamie Varner. Barner has the belt. Tillman, last round. Cerrone wants it. It comes down to a final five minutes. And at this point, this is where that nothing to lose attitude of Donald Cerrone might really come into play, Frank. If he knows he's only got five minutes left to go, this guy's a daredevil. He'll do anything he can. I don't know, I really got the impression that Donald Cerrone purely loves fighting for the sake of fighting. I think winning and losing, obviously, you know, we all like to win. But uh, if there's been a person I've seen that likes to be in the heat of battle, it's Donald Cerrone. I think he's enjoying every moment of this back and forth exchange. And to touch on that, you know, he trains there in New Mexico with Greg Jackson. Greg Jackson has said that as much as we've seen from Donald Cerrone, he thinks the well's pretty deep there. We're going to see a lot more. I will have to find it very hard to argue that point for now, what we're seeing. Here he's coming forward, still marching, throwing some vicious strikes. He poses a threat at all times on his feet or even off his back. And the champ, Jamie Varner, is playing a smart game. He's trying to avoid the kicks by moving around using footwork. At this point now, he's using his hands, throwing, uh, excuse me, mixing up with the hand techniques and the takedowns. Oh, wow. And now it's Cerrone with the takedown. See what kind of ground and pound Cerrone has, or if he's going to go ahead and who knows what's on the judges' decisions right now, what's on the cards, if he goes for a submission from the top. All of a sudden, it's Jamie Varner looking a bit more gassed than the challenger. Watch that, watch the, watch the, the knee from Cerrone just misses. 
But wait a minute. Varner. What's this, Frank? Let's take a look at this replay. But take a second, take a second, take a second. Varner was getting up. His hand lifted. No, he was on the ground still. You can't have more than three points of contact on the ground. You only have your feet on the ground. Right there, his hip, his knee, his shin. He wasn't up yet. Cerrone just has a lot of killer instinct. Look at me. Sit back, look at me. Hopefully, you know, it'd be a shame that it ends like this. Josh Rosenthal directing Donald Cerrone to a neutral no area in the cage. It's unintentional, I'm not going to take the point. I don't believe it's intentional. Jamie oh, Varner no. has five minutes to rest and recoup. But look at this. The crowd might be reacting to what they see inside the cage. Varner has, that's it. Josh Rosenthal is saying Varner cannot continue. That's a shame, you know, it was such a beautiful okay. fight going back and forth. Obviously, if, uh, you know, a foul occurs and the fighter's unable to continue, the fight's uh, stopped. Let's take another look at that, Frank. You've already described that Varner was on the canvas. Cerrone, though, was just playing, playing what he could. Yeah, Donald Cerrone was throwing the knee. I think he felt that maybe that Jamie Varner had already came all the way up on the cage. I can see about where my hand is. And at this stage in the fight, through fatigue and already abuse taken, it might have been the, uh, the straw that broke the camel's back. Jamie Varner still on the ground, shaking his head. He can't believe how much pain he is in. Oh, Donald oh Cerrone God, can't believe oh, that the fight oh. has been stopped. Just sit down on the ground. And you said it, Frank. Sit you want to see how much Varner has taken in this fight? It was the please. final knee of Cerrone coming at an inopportune time that has stopped this fight. Huh? They're calling it an unintentional foul, and they are going to score all five rounds. So from what we're hearing, Frank, there's going to be a decision. There will be a winner in this match. Again, the knee just kind of grazed up Jamie Varner on the side, maybe caught him in the temple. The shame of the fact is that we didn't get to see a, a decisive finish to this fight, but the good news is, at least with it going to the judge's scorecard, it's not going to be ruled a no contest. Uh, you know, Donald Cerrone is not going to be DQ due to the foul. Sorry, man, We're going to go ahead and have an actual sorry, winner decided out of this battle upon how much points are accumulated during the rounds. They're going to go to the scorecards and actually score rounds one through four. Fifth round, being the fact that it was never finished, will not have a score on it. But that way we can go ahead and, and really feel that we have a, somewhat of a closure to this fight. Even though obviously the fans and everybody here watching would much rather have enjoyed seeing this fight fought to the finish. I'm sorry. So there's no uh, guesswork to what could have happened, especially since the champ wasn't a, you know, a getting taken down in a bad position. You know, fight's a fight. Who knows what would have happened right. if this would have gone the full distance either way. I'm sorry. I can't see. Obviously, the crowd not very happy about the fact going on, but I don't think they're aware of the fact that we will be able to go ahead and have a decision here right now. Champion Jamie Varner in the middle, obviously very unhappy with the ability to go ahead and not finish the fight. Donald Cerrone not probably pleased either with the uh, the outcome of this. Let's go inside the cage and check in with Joe Martinez for the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, due to an unintentional foul by rules of the California State Athletic Commission, we go to the scorecards. Judge Nelson Hamilton scores the bout 49 to 46 for Varner. Judge Alejandro Rochin scores it 48 to 47 for Cerrone.
And Judge Richard Bertrand scores it 49 to 46 for your winner by split decision. And still, WEC Lightweight Champion of the World, Jamie Varner! And just to be clear, that unintentional foul meant that it didn't go to the scorecard, but Jamie, I know you're upset. You're shaking your head. What's going through your mind at the moment? I'm better than that, guys. I'm really sorry. I broke my hand in the second or third round, and I, I took a knee or kick to the head on the ground. Boom me. Go ahead. Fucking boom me. Hey, let's, let's talk. Forget about the fans for a second. Let's talk about this fight. You knew coming in it was going to be a war. Cerrone didn't disappoint as an opponent. Not at all. Donald, I'm sorry. I swear. No, I'm fine. sorry, I'm better than that. You know it. You've seen me fight before. I'm better than that. All right. Well, Jamie, you still have the belt. Donald, come in here right now. The fans have voiced their opinion. You are a fan of fighting pure and simple. You are a guy that is willing, you've said it before, you're willing to stand with anybody. Coming into this fight, you felt if you could push the pace, you would have Varner's number. Did you feel once the st fight started, you were able to push? Oh, yeah. I, uh... He caught me with a punch in my eye, and I saw it double the second, third round, so I keep having to close my eyes. Everything was double, so I mean, I wish I could have gone harder, but man, my hat's off to the guy. Uh, hopefully he'll give me another shot. I don't know. If not, I'll go to the end of the, work my way back up. <laughs> I, I don't think you're going to have to go to the back of the line. I, I, I'm not sure, but I think you're going to probably get a title shot sooner than you think. But let's again, let's talk about the fight. It seemed that every time Varner was able to negate your leg, the roundhouse kicks, he was able to find a way to get your chin, but you then also had an answer. Yeah, uh, man, he, he's, he was drilling that, you know, I keep my hand down, but trying to keep it up, I was trying to keep my distance. But, and my hat's off the guy, he did a great job, Varner. Hell yeah, man, maybe we can run it back someday, I don't know, you know what I mean? We're doing this again. Hey, we're gonna do this again. We're gonna do this again. As soon as I get cleared from the athletic commission, me and him can do it again. I will not disappoint. San Diego, you heard it here first. They both want the rematch. There's no question you want the rematch. And everybody watching at home would love to see these guys go five more. What a great match that was. Varner keeps the belts.